Welcome back. The objective of this lesson is to define and describe the various distributions as they apply to statistical process control and probability. Normal, binomial, Poisson, chi-square, students t, and f distributions are discussed in brief here. Probability distribution is a function that describes the probability of a random variable taking certain value. It is a table or an equation that links each outcome of a statistical experiment with its probability of occurrence. To understand the characteristics of probability distribution we should know a term called as the variable. Variable is a symbol that can take on any of the specified set of values. When the value of a variable is the outcome of a statistical experiment, that variable is a random variable. A capital letter is used to represent the random variable and its lower case is used to represent the value. Example, small x is a value of the random variable capital X. Px is the probability of x. Probability of capital X equals small x refers to the probability of the random variable x taking a particular value. Probability distributions can be categorized as discrete or continuous probability distributions. Discrete distributions are when the random variable is discrete. For example, flip of coin, number of defects. Common distributions in this category are binomial, hypergeometric, Poisson. Where random variable is a continuous value, it is a continuous probability distribution. For example, productivity, effort variance, etc. Common distributions in this category are normal, students t, chi square and F distribution. We now go through all these distributions one by one and learn about their basic characteristics. The binomial distribution is applicable where there are only two kinds of possible outcomes. For example, pass and fail, go or no go etc. Suppose a binomial experiment consists of n independent and repeated trials and results in x successes. If the probability of success on an individual trial is p, then the binomial probability is derived from this equation. Rolling of dice, tossing a coin, a call attempt to a call center, testing a product, these are some of the examples which follow binomial distribution. Let us see how to analyze binomial distribution with the help of an example. Suppose we are testing a sample of 50 parts with replacement, where we expect a average defect rate of 1% and we want to know the probability of finding two or fewer defects in the batch. Since we want to know probability of two or less defects we have to calculate cumulative probability here, meaning probability of getting zero defects, and one defect and two defects. Each probability can be calculated and then to calculate overall probability, we can take summation of all the probabilities for zero, 1 and 2 respectively. 0 0.986 is the answer if we do manual calculation. Same can be calculated in Excel as well, using binomdist function. In the dialog box that appears, we fill the inputs, numbers here are 2, trials. As we can see in the question, are 50? Probability here is the expected average defect trait, that is 1%. And in cumulative, we shall write, True. This also gives the same answer of 0 0.986. To interpret, we can say that the probability of finding two or less defects in the batch is 0 0.986, assuming the expected average defect rate is 1%. As an exercise, use the binomdist function and find the probability of getting one or less defects, getting zero defects, etc. Now, let us see the characteristics of Poisson distribution. The number of outcomes occurring in one time interval is independent of the number that occurs in any other disjoint time interval, that is why it is called as a memoryless distribution. The probability that a single outcome will occur during a very short time interval is proportional to the length of that interval and doesn't depend on the number of outcomes occurring outside this time interval and the probability that more than one outcome will occur in such a short time interval is negligible. Suppose we conduct a Poisson experiment, in which the average number of successes within a given region is mu. Then, 
The Poisson probability is calculated using this equation. Here x is the actual number of successes that result from the experiment, and e is approximately equal to 2.71828. Poisson distribution can be applied in many fields related to counting. For example, a car arriving at a traffic signal, or customers arriving at a counter. Now, if we apply the properties that we learnt, in case of car arriving at a traffic signal, the number of outcomes occurring in one time interval is independent of the outcomes in some other time at the same signal. Meaning we can say, if in the morning there are 10 cars, this is not going to have any influence on number of cars in the evening. Similarly, the second property also holds true that a single outcome's probability depends on the length of that particular signal, irrespective of the number of outcomes outside this interval. Also, the probability is negligible that more than one car will arrive in such a short time interval. Now, let us take this example. The average number of homes sold by the Acme Realty Company is two homes per day. What is the probability that exactly three homes will be sold tomorrow? Here we know that average mu is two homes sold per day, x is equal to three, and this is absolute and not cumulative. E is a constant value of 2.12828. Putting all these in the equation gives the answer of 0 0.18. So we can say the probability of selling exact three homes is 0 0.18. In Excel, we can use Poisson dot dice function and fill the values. Here we note that cumulative is false, reasons we just discussed. The answer that we get is again 0 0.18. The uses of Poisson distribution include finding probability in cases of Number of events in an interval of time or area when the events are occurring at a constant rate. Number of items in a batch of random size. In design reliability tests where the failure rate is considered to be constant as a function of usage. One of the commonly applied distribution is student's t distribution. This arises when we are estimating the mean of a normally distributed population when sample size is small and population standard deviation is unknown. Let x1 till xn be the numbers observed in a sample from a continuously distributed population with expected value mu. The sample mean x bar and sample variance s square is equal to the equation given here. And the t value can be calculated using this formula as shown here. T distribution is used in hypothesis testing of population mean when sample size is small. When we have infinite degrees of freedom, or in a layman's terms, high sample size, T distribution equals to normal distribution. Let us see characteristics of chi distribution. Mean of the distribution is equal to the number of degrees of freedom, that is mu equals nu. The variance is equal to 2 times the number of degrees of freedom. Sigma square equals 2 nu. As the degree of freedom increases, chi-square curve approaches a normal distribution. If s square is the variance of a random sample size of n, taken from a normal population having the variance sigma square, then the statistic chi-square is represented by this equation. And it has a chi distribution within 1 degrees of freedom. It is used in hypothesis testing to test the variance of population. Sampling distribution of variance follows the chi-square distribution. It is also used for testing goodness of fit. If x1 and x2 are chi-squared random variables, with n1 and n2 degrees of freedom, then the distribution of random variable f is represented by this equation. It is also called the variance ratio distribution. It is used in hypothesis testing to test whether the two samples have come from the population having same variance. ANOVA also uses this distribution. We'll cover more about these distributions later while discussing hypothesis testing. Normal distribution has a bell-shaped curve and it is symmetric distribution. Shape is defined by the two parameters, mean and standard deviation. Mean provides the location of the center of the graph and standard deviation, width of the graph. 
When the standard deviation is large, the curve is short and wide. When the standard deviation is small, the curve is tall and narrow. Total area under normal curve is 1, and the probability that a normal random variable x is equal to any particular value is 0. Though, the probability that x is greater than any value aa is equal to the area under the normal curve bounded by aa and plus infinity, indicated by the non shaded area in this diagram. Probability that x is less than or is equal to the area under normal curve bounded by a minus infinity, the shaded area in this diagram. So far we have covered some basic concepts of statistics. The lessons on probability and probability distribution are kept brief as a green belt needs to be familiar with the terminologies. Though you may anytime refer our YouTube channel as we have added some good videos already available on YouTube, for your reference and in-depth understanding of the vast subject called probability. Here we come to an end to this lesson. Should you need any support, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching this video, and see you in the next lesson.